Hi, and thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to be looking at lesson 5.3, which is writing and solving proportions. Um, we are going to be writing down nine things in our notes. Mainly it is just how to write a proportion and then practicing how to write them. It's very simple once you get the hang of it, so let's go ahead and get started to see what it looks like. Uh, the, one of the ways you can write a proportion is seeing it in a table. Um, this one is actually set up perfectly. Last month you um, purchased two ringtones for $6, so this month you're purchasing three ringtones for X dollars. Whenever you're writing them as a proportion, you want to make sure that you keep the rates the same. So if you start with two ringtones on top and $6 on the bottom, you have three ringtones on the top over here and X dollars on the bottom here. So numerators have the same units and denominators have the same units. Go ahead and pause the video now and you're just going to copy this example right here. Once you're done, click play so you can see what's next. Another way that you can use this, and this is maybe not the most popular way, but it still works. If you'd like to write it down, you can, but you don't have to. Another way you could use it is rows. So units must be directly across from one another, or you can use the same ratio format. Notice how I still kept the two ringtones to $6 on the same row, and that would be um, writing it as a ratio like this. Okay, but then you could also put underneath it the new one. Since I put two ringtones here, that means the three ringtones would go underneath it and across from it would be the X dollars. Okay, so that's just another way to do it. If you want to write it that way, you can. What we're going to do now is try these. So um, you can pause the video now to see if you can try it by yourself. If not, we're going to start it and write it together here in three, two, one. So number two says to write the proportion for a recipe, there are two eggs to three cups of flour. So that's your very first rate. So what I always like to do is find my rate with the numbers and units that go with one another and go ahead and write it. Two eggs and three cups of flour. I'm going to say CFL for cups of flour. If you wanted to use nine cups of flour, how many eggs should you use in the proportional relationship? Nine cups of flour goes with flour. So I'm going to put nine here at the bottom because I have bought, I have already have eggs to flour over here, so I'm going to do eggs to flour over here. I don't know the number of eggs, so I'm going to write x eggs, and then maybe even figure out if I can solve this proportion. We do know that proportions are equivalent fractions, so I, and I see that 3 has just been tripled to get to 9, so that means 2 is probably going to be tripled to get to x, so that means I'm probably going to be using 6 eggs. We'll talk about another way to solve proportions tomorrow in the next video, but for right now just make sure you know how to solve or how to write them. So this one you're going to try on your own. Go ahead and pause it, read through, and try to write your proportion by yourself. Once you're done, click play to check your work. So this one says a chef increases the amounts of ingredients of a recipe to make the proportional recipe. The original recipe calls for 1.5 cups of black beans and one tomato. So I all, again, always start with the original ratio, 1.5 cups of black beans, I'm going to say BB for black beans, and one tomato, I'm going to say one tom. Okay, the new recipe has six cups of black beans. Since it's talking about black beans, and I already put black beans on the top on the left side, I'm also going to put the six cups of black beans on the top on the right side, and X tomatoes will go here. So your answer should be 1.5 black beans over one tomato is equal to six black beans over X tomatoes. Remember, you could also write it like this, 1.5 black beans, and then your, um, your equivalent rate, rate or ratio across from it, one tomato, six black beans, and right across from that, X tomatoes. So that's another way you can write it as well. This way, though, is probably the most popular way, okay? Write and solve this proportion. So you're going to, again, pause the video and try it by yourself to see what you get. So this one says the stadium holds approximately 45,000 people as total during a baseball game. If the ratio of season ticket holders to all tickets is 1 to 3, how many season ticket holders are there? It says write a proportion and then solve. So I know my ratio is 1 to 3. 1 represents... Um, season tickets, and then so I'm going to put ST, and then 3 represents all tickets. I'm going to do AT. Oops, let me scoot this over. So all tickets. The 45,000, I'm going to either put it with season tickets or all tickets. 
it does say the stadium holds a total of 45,000 45, people. So that's probably all tickets. I'm going to write 45,000 on the bottom with all tickets. Don't know how many season ticket holders are there. But notice that one third is being used. So you basically are finding a third of 45,000, which means about 15,000 of people are season tickets. Okay. This one you're going to try on your own, so go ahead and pause it, try it, and then click play to check. So it says the ratio of quarts to gallons is 4 to 1, so that means 4 quarts, 1 gallon. So I'm going to go ahead and write that, 4 quarts over 1 gallon. If a recipe calls for 14 quarts, 14 would go on top with the other quarts, how many gallons, x gallons, would we need? Okay. This one just didn't, it didn't say to solve, so all you needed to do was write that. If you did solve it, though, um, you're essentially figuring out how many times 4 can go into 14. And that will give you 3.5. So if you did solve it, it is 3.5 gallons, but you didn't have to. Okay, this one says write a proportion to find how many points a student needs to have on the test to get the given score. Notice that the, the, the test is worth 50 points, so it's out of 50 points. And then you have a test score of 85%. Something you should need to know about percents is that all percents are out of 100. So if I know 85% is out of 100, how many points are out of 50? Okay, so that would just be one way you can write it. A lot of people get confused about this part, so just make sure all your percents are out of 100. Go ahead and take time now to pause and write the question down and how you would set it up. And once you're done, click play to go try the next three. All right, last three you're going to try on your own. Um, these are very sim simple. Maybe look at the relationship that the numerators and de denominators have. Pause the video, try them, then click play to check. Okay, what I noticed about number 7 is 5 can be multiplied by 4 to get to 20, so I know 8 times 4 can be 32. Okay, remember, proportions are just equivalent fractions, so you're essentially just figuring out how were they made equivalent. Number 8, I can do 7 times 2 to get 14, so what times 2 to get to 10, and that's going to be 5. And then over here, I know that I did 24 divided by 3 to get to 8, so 21 divided by 3 can give me 7. That's just one way that you can solve proportions. Tomorrow in our next video, we're going to talk about another way that we can solve proportions, and that way will work every single time. Um, that is going to conclude our notes for today, so go ahead and close on out and get ready to work on the next activity. Have a great day. Great day.